so then you you also have this situation where there's a there's a guy named Mr. Bradley who was one of his partners. So it was Wade Campbell Bradley or Wade Bradley Campbell, whatever you want to call the law firm that they had together. And again, I apologize that I'm all over the place because this damn case is all over the place. So they had a law firm together and Bradley ended up def- uh, being Wade's attorney in his divorce proceedings, right? So he was his attorney for a couple of years. I guess it didn't go anywhere, but you know, um, they ended up falling out, right? So not only was Bradley Wade's attorney for his divorce, but Wade was Bradley's attorney for some construction lawsuit that was going on. So once once they made that known that he that they were both each other's attorneys, I click I quickly realized what the hell was going on here. Like first of all, all the people we talking about are all lawyers. So I quickly realized what was going on here. Their friends they represented each other in these cases so that going forward they would always be protected by this attorney client privilege stuff that that they call and that has been like a biggest the biggest point of contention in the last two days of this hearing is what actually is protected by attorney client privilege is attorney client privilege only in play while like in between the time period of you hiring that attorney or is once you become a person's attorney now everything that they have said to you is now privileged information so they've been arguing about that a lot and i honestly don't know the answer to it because Yesterday was the first time I found out that attorney-client privilege wasn't an actual law. It's just case law that they go by. So it's not really codified. It's not It's not policy anywhere. Judges just uphold it, but it's not really a rule. It's not a law. So I didn't know that, though, until yesterday. So that's why they're even arguing it, because there, there's really an argument to be had. And I wouldn't be surprised if um, some things change soon because of that. Especially because we have a, pre- a former president involved, so this is none of this stuff is going to stay local. All of it is is going big. So, so Bradley defended Wade. Wade defended Bradley. So now they got this attorney client, client privilege thing going on. They can't speak on they well, they're refusing to speak on certain things with each other. But one thing that came out while they were uh, examining while they were ex- cross examining Bradley. They like so, Bradley. You and um, you and Mr. Wade, y'all had y'all had a split from your business. Why? Why? What happened? He like it was a little dispute. We just you know we went our separate ways. Attorney Cross, who's this, who's the district attorney in this case right here, the prosecutor. She's like, um, didn't didn't y'all have a, didn't y'all have a falling out or a dispute about a sexual assault? He was like, no. He's like, so she was like, so you didn't get accused of sexual assault. So she's talking to Mr. Bradley. She's like, you didn't get accused of sexual assault by one of the employees. He was he got quiet. He he was trying to figure out a way out of it, dance out of it. He was like, yes, I, I got accused pretty much saying not that I did it. I didn't do it, but I did get accused. Yes, that happened. He's like so. And didn't Mr. Wade confront you about it? And that's what made y'all have a separation. And he's like, he didn't want to answer. He's like, yeah. So and then so Mr. Bradley's lawyer is in the stands in the audience or whatever you want to call it. He stands up and objects and it's like, whoa. So he's pretty much realizing that, okay, the only way y'all got that information is if Wade told y'all that. If Wade told y'all that, that means that attorney-client privilege is out the window now. He even said that. I think he said something like, so if that's the case, then attorney-client privilege is done. Uh, Bradley's lawyer said that because that's that would be information that they they would have known that only one person had that information. The only person that had that information was Mr. Wade, Nathan Wade. So if that means if the state has it now, that means he told them, which means attorney attorney client privileges out the window. So I I honestly think that this is this this situation in this case is a lot more complex than that YSL uh, situation. So it's it's almost like if if, because. These hearings are just all legal people. There's no, everybody pretty much in this courtroom is like a lawyer. It's high level argument going on right now. Like they're in there making lawyers look stupid. All the people that they putting on the stand to talk about and all this, these are all lawyers. Pretty much for the most part. These are like all lawyers pretty much. So 
like there's some high level arguing going on. It's you really got to watch this case. You got when y'all get a chance to, you really want to get tapped in with this one. If you are interested in any of this type of stuff, these debates, these arguments, learning about new different parts of law, all that type of stuff, you want to watch this one. Another little key point too, and I didn't even get into Fonnie Willis's testimony yet. Another little key point too is a lot of a lot of this falling out was centered around Fonnie Willis actually falling out with, with a friend of hers, like a long time old school friend. It was friends in college. They didn't go to the same college. One went to Morgan State. The other one went to Howard. They was friends back then. Then they lost contact. Then they met up again 10 years ago. And Fonnie Willis gave uh, Robin Bryant a job at the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. They ended up falling out there. And actually, if you look at like GOP or right wing news sources, they consider that lady Robin Bryant a, a, what they call a whistleblower, because I guess there was some improper handling of funds and Robin Bryant went and exposed it. Some somehow I don't know who she told, but she went and exposed it. So her and Fonnie Willis fell out and they fired her pretty much. And um, but Robin Bryant, which they were calling her Yersi or something like I forget what her, she has a married name now, but. Fonnie Willis said her original name is Bryant. So Robin Bryant is, she actually didn't tell what they fell out about. She just said, we had a dispute and, you know, they told me I either, either I'm going to get fired or I can resign. And I just decided to resign. That's what she said. So, uh, and then even when Fonnie Willis went on the stand, she said that um, they, they're not friends anymore. And she felt like they got, she betrayed her. She felt like Robin Bryant betrayed her. So, there's definitely some sticky stuff going on with this whole thing. Now, Fonnie Willis was going viral because of her, some of her testimony. And she did say a lot. And she was pissed when she came in the courtroom. Like, she, first of all, they didn't call her to court. She came in on her own and just walked in. And she said, yo, I, she said, after you was done with Mr. Wade, they asked her, like, why did you just come here? We didn't, we didn't call you. She's like, that, I was just the most logical next person because it just makes sense. Because you finished up with him. I already knew you was about to call me. It just made the most sense. Let's get going. I can't wait to talk to you. I can't wait to get into this. So essentially, what's happening is the other woman is now looking at the wife's friend. The other woman would be Fonnie Willis in this situation. The wife's friend would be Ashley Merchant in this situation. So from the gate, and they all know... Everybody knows who each other is in this situation. Fonnie Willis knows that that white that lady that white lady Ashley Merchant is Nathan Wade's wife's friend. She knows that, so she's hostile with this lady from the beginning. She she like yo, you lied on me. You put this stuff in the media. They don't have integrity in the media no more. Anything a lawyer say, they just print it. Like she was tripping. So, but for for the people that don't realize why she was going at Ashley Merchant like that, that's the reason. Is because she's friends. With her man, with 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 Nathan Wade's ex-wife, or not ex-wife, they're still married now. All right, so she gets on the stand and she wants to clear up immediately how her and Nathan Wade met and how long the meeting has been going on, right? And then at what point it became romantic, and then at what point the romantic part ended. So she wanted to be very clear about that. She also wanted to be very clear about the fact that. Anything that Nathan Wade did with her and for her, she paid him back for. She she like, I don't need a man for anything. Men are not the plan. I don't want to need to live off a man. I got my own money. I could pay my own way, all that. So she was like, and I guess they both, her and Nathan Wade said, like, we used to argue about this all the time because Fonnie Willis, she won't let me do stuff for her. She always want to pay me back. And Fonnie Willis was like, yeah, when we go on vacations, I take cash with me. I'm going to give him the money right back right then. So, you know, that was a that was a whole thing that she wanted to keep on emphasizing the fact that it was cash and all the people that was examining her kept on saying like, so, so you don't have any record of ever giving him any of this. This is just all cash. Like where you just have all this cash at. And that's what she get into the whole like my dad, you know, this is a black thing. My dad always taught me to keep money. Always take if you go on a date, always keep at least two hundred dollars with you. You should always have at least fifteen thousand dollars in your house. You should always have six months worth of expenses like in cash in your house. So she was just getting into all that bag right there. And um, that that part lasted for a while. And they kept on questioning her about this money. They're like, 
So you don't you you never sent him any cash app. You never sent him a check. You never did this. You like pretty much you've never done anything with a paper trail sending that man his money back. And she was like, nah, I don't. Nope. I'm a cash person. I always have cash on me. That's my thing. So, like I said, she's actually not in trouble. Her reputation is on the line, but she's not actually in trouble right now. So, that's why she was barking like that on them. And and, and she got at him like, y'all are trying to put me on trial, but I'm not on trial. Y'all are on trial. For what she said, something about messing up democracy or whatever whatever word she used. But she was like, like, I I don't have to. I do what I want pretty much because I'm not on trial here. And... When y'all try to get my bank records and all that, I'm blocking it. I'm not going to let you get my bank records again because I'm not the one that's on trial here. Yeah, Fonnie Willis was getting at them crazy. And then she, you know, she started talking about her dad and stuff like that. And and then she was like, y'all going to meet my dad and you, you'll see like he, the, everything I'm telling y'all, he, I got it from him. You're going to see. So then let's fast forward because Fonnie Willis said a lot. I want y'all to go watch it if you care much that much about it. Her dad, so the next day, which will be Friday, her dad is the first one to testify. And uh, I was like, dang, her dad, like, I didn't know her dad is actually like a super lawyer. He's not he's not just like a regular dude. He's like an internationally known, famous lawyer. Like they say he even used to date Angela Davis, like the civil the activist, Angela Davis. Like he's internationally known as a lawyer. He used to work with Mandela. He was part of the Black Panthers, part of the civil rights movement. He got law degrees. He's just a big dog in his world in this uh, legal world. So I'm like, damn, he got a story like that. And I, and I was so glad that he said during this testimony, because now I'm, I'm on, it's on the radar for me, that he's working on a documentary about himself. So I can't wait. I hope after seeing his testimony and after his daughter is going viral like this, hopefully some studio will fund his uh, documentary so that we can really see his story played out. Because, you know, he was around at that time where in LA, where it was real rugged. It was real crazy for them back then. And it was it was very racial tensions were very high and he survived all that and he became a top tier lawyer. And actually what made him going to go to law school is because of what he's seen going on while he was in a Black Panther Party. So and I told people this before and I try to tell people this all the time. A lot of the Black Panthers weren't what people people just think about Black Panthers, think about the guns and stuff like that. Most of those Black Panthers were college kids. They were scholars. That That's what they most most of them were. They weren't. Like y'all, y'all are mixing them up with like the Crips, for real, because that's how the Crips started to defend black people against white people, white gangs and stuff like that. Uh, but the Black Panthers are pretty much scholars. That's why the stuff that they came up with was so like genius. You know what I'm saying? Like protesting, like by we gonna know the law, so we know we march out here with guns. We gonna know are we doing like after school programs? Are we doing uh, breakfast programs and all that? Like they were. Organized, extremely organized and extremely intelligent. He was one of them. And he went to college and he became a lawyer and all that. And then Fonnie Willis followed in his footsteps also by becoming a lawyer. So I just think uh, his story is great. He he mostly came there to testify to have Nathan Wade ever been to Fonnie Willis's house in South Fulton. Be, the reason he could testify to is because he lived in that house. So uh, he said no. He said he never even met that man before 2013, 2023. And he said he never knew that she was even in a relationship with that man. She, he said, I found out when everybody else found out. I seen it on the news. That was how I found out she was messing with that man. And of course, we we can just guess. Fonnie Willis didn't tell her dad she was messing with that man because her dad probably would have told her not to, and that's improper, and you shouldn't do that. You're going to put your whole career on the line trying to mess with this dude that's a lawyer, and then you're going to hire him. Like so, uh, so, so, I'm sure that's why her dad didn't know about it because Fonnie probably purposely kept it away from him. Um, but th- this whole thing is interesting, man. I t- like y'all have to, y'all have to check it out, man. Y'all really have to check it out. 